Welcome back, everybody. It is the Working Brother back at you with another talk. Yet again, we've got Stas, also known as Stanislav Krapivnik. Stan, Stas, how are you doing? Good, good. Alive. <laughs> Just That's probably excellent. more I deserve. That's excellent. That's excellent. It's good to have you back. Uh, people really enjoyed uh, the last talk you and I had. Um, regular viewers will notice I even dressed up for this talk. I'm uh, officially in like my military garb. You want to remind people of who you are and uh, what you have done and what you do now? Yeah, I'm a former U.S. Army uh, um, captain promotable. Uh, turned down the major's rank. Uh, left uh, for pol for political reasons. Didn't feel like uh, planning war against my own people anymore. Uh, that when I was up in uh, 18th Airborne Corps, I got to see the, the bigger picture. Um, did a lot of time in uh, oil and gas, uh, heavy industry, and I'm a military and political expert uh, now, and uh, a bit of a journalist, just a bit. Excellent, excellent. And, uh, enough to be dangerous. <laughs> enough to be dangerous. Um, and you also spent some time, you mentioned, uh, in uh, the former Yugoslav republics uh, before they were former. <laughs> so, or or um, some after they were former. No, after, after they were former. All right. Uh, do you want to clue people in on that before we get into some of the like heavier topics? Oh, and just disclaimer before I uh, we go any further. This is a comedy show for anybody who's new here. Um, nothing we say has anything to do with reality. Just to make that clear. All right. Now you can you can get back into that joke that you were going to say. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I was in Macedonia for uh, about half a year, and uh, I was in Bosnia for a year. Uh, Got to look at Serbia across the river uh, from Serbska Republic uh, in a place called uh, Uglevich, or as we used to call it, Uglyville. That a half built, uh, uh, I guess, uh, electric power plant uh, that was just on the, on the horizon, still like half skeletal. So didn't help with the looks. I don't know what to say. No, uh, I'll say the. Uh, uh, the owner, now I had my uh, small base that I uh, was there, I was commanding for a couple of months. And across uh, this little swing bridge was the Russian brigade headquarters for the airborne. And this was, this was part of a UN mission? No, uh, well, the, uh, the Macedonia was a UN mission. Uh, this was uh, peacekeeping. So I don't know if. Uh, it was K4, uh, so I don't know if it was, uh, not K4, I'm sorry, S4. Umpro 4. Uh, Umpro 4 or S4? S4. Yeah. I don't know if you call it peace UN, but uh, it, it was enforced force, yeah, enforced uh, peacekeeping. You know, you're going to keep the peace or we're going to kill you. Uh, so, <laughs> so I don't know yeah, Unfortunately... Unfortunately, most of those uh, peacekeeping missions, in my uh, experience, do very little peacekeeping and often are the instigators of, of tensions and then just uh, pack up and leave, basically, uh, like like they did, uh, you know, several other places. I'm talking about the UN, Rwanda, for example, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you, you know, when I was uh, commanding that uh, the, the American side, that, that small base in uh, Uglivik, uh there were the 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 silly serbs in the uh serbska republic uh actually believed uh they were getting to be democratic believe it or not they were actually that silly uh so they there was a couple of political parties that started broadcasting on uh radio stations their view of how things are supposed to be well, you know, democracy is democracy we're defending you know somebody's democracy but definitely not their democracy so <laughs> there was a uh, uh, platoon-sized element that went out uh, to that radio station and banged up the equipment, quite literally. The, you know, took rifle butts and busted everything up because that's the way the U.S. democracy works. Their democracy, not your democracy. Yeah. Well, the there's, a, Serbs, there's some people uh, in Serbia who still think uh, <laughs> the European Union's democracy will save us. So, you know, you can't blame them for thinking it back then, <laughs> you know. Well, the uh, the 
local population, they weren't too thrilled about finding out what democracy actually uh, meant or who's democracy. So they uh, they went down there and they were protesting and uh, surrounding the uh, the U.S. troops. Uh, well, behind the U.S. troops was a uh, God. I can't remember uh, what we called them, uh, but th there was a uh, a store truck, right? So this this van, this long van that uh, sold whatever goods you wanted for the military van, uh, and they're like a like an RV sized van long one and they come around to uh, do a uh, courier run through all of the little bases everywhere patrol bases so you could buy up stuff you know once a, a couple of days that show up and they'd follow these guys out there right <laughs> and they want to be on the other side of this uh, mob so like like good American businessmen what did they do they opened up for business started selling cigarettes and drinks to the mob <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah. Were all paranoid because they disappeared, right? So they, they lost sight of them. They were paranoid. We were looking, uh, getting ready to do a put, uh, set a patrol out. I'm getting all these updates, and I got my guys ready to, uh, to, to go out looking for these guys so they're not going to get killed or robbed. No, they just set up shop and started feeding the mob. <laughs> Freaking idiots. But, uh, yeah, well, welcome. Considering... Uh, Considering you, okay. you, you mentioned uh, American democracy and protecting it, and uh, it is uh, the 13th as we record this. Well, still here. Technically there, it's the 14th already. Um, September 11th. You got anything to say about the official story now that you're uh, Russia side? <laughs> um, you know, I kind of bought into it for a while. Um... One of the things that really changed my mind uh, was uh, 2014, and the fighting starts in Donetsk, Donetsk airport. So and it, it used to be a really nice airport. I was there once. Really nice modern airport. And the you're talking you're talking about the new about the new airport, right? Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the renovated one, well, the, the renovated one that's not new anymore, where like yeah, uh, two battles much, were fought. There wasn't much left of it after the fighting got <laughs> yep. done. Um, well, the uh, aviation control tower, which is a steel tower, right? And they fought over, I don't know how many people died <laughs> fighting over that tower, because whoever sat in that tower could call in artillery and his opponents. Was, you know, it uh, looked over everything. You're talking. And you're talking the, now. You're talking now about the old tower of the old airport that was facing the mo the monastery, right? Because I, I like Texas uh, walked me around. Let's put it that way. So like I, I'm relatively familiar with the with the layout. Yeah. I'll try and get a video cool. here in the background as you go on. So the tower took an umpteen amount of direct hits from uh, 120 and 152 millimeter artillery. And it, I mean, it took an umpteen amount of hits before it finally crashed. And you start looking at this like, frick, man. You know, it didn't, it burnt, it blasted, and it wouldn't come down. And now you look at these buildings that, because of jet fuel burning, yeah, you know, kind of, kind of hard to believe. And the fact that the uh, the passports are found, you know, all the whole building comes cra crashing down. I have it queued. I have it queued. Look, yeah. never forget, jet fuel doesn't melt <laughs> passports. <laughs> passports. <laughs> the guys who were, by the way, first <laughs> into that blast. <laughs> and their passports get tossed out the window, I guess, off their bodies, off their charcoal bodies, and land with all the crap falling everywhere. They land nice and safe, and, and there they are. There's also so, that little detail about um, September 10th, if you remember, uh, was it Dick Cheney or that other guy? Walt, oh, yeah, what, yeah. What's, the, I, what's the other guy's name? I can't remember his name right no, off the top of my head. It was Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld. There um, you go. Donald Rumsfeld. Yes. $2.3 million, 4.2 today went missing. Missing. No, 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 not million. <laughs> Really, billion, trillion. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. A, a little background on that. Uh, that was the first of, I think, six audits of the Defense Department of the United States of America. Uh, and by the way, it failed all six of them. Uh, pathetically, failed all six of them. 
The last one I think was a year ago or a year and a half ago. So anyways, two two trillion dollars is missing. And what that means, it didn't just all go missing in one year, right? So this accumulated. And when the audit came, first ever audit, and they go, okay. So on paper, you've got so many tanks, you've got so many planes, you've got so many tanks of this model, so many tanks of that model, you got so many uh, wheeled vehicles, you got so many barracks, you got so many of this. Let's go. And the amount of equipment missing was just ludicrous, right? So how much got pocketed, how much got left behind, how much was sold on the black market, who the hell knows? But it was $2 trillion. And so this is a big thing when uh, Rumsfeld pops on the, on, the, on the telly and goes, well, yeah, we kind of failed the audit. It was like $2 trillion. Oh, look, planes in the tower. Oh, we'll forget all about this. And 99.9% .9 of humanity has zero clue that this ever happened. <laughs> Um, coincidence, I'm sure, uh, but uh, you know, very, very well timed. Uh, almost as well timed as Dick Cheney shooting his friend on a hunting trip. Um, remind us what that was about the the shooting his friend in the face. Uh, while I pop up this never forget meme. Um, building. Yeah, seven. Dick Cheney was on a hunting trip, and uh, d dear zero friend one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, which, which, by the way, Dick Cheney, you know, a little background be, uh, about these two guys. Dick Cheney uh, was, because, I mean, this is the American oligarchy. And if you read uh, what Aristotle said about wait, it, al what, 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 wait, wait, what, what, what do you mean, American oligarchy? I thought America was like a free and democratic state. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, and then you put down the crack pipe and reality kicks in. Uh, <laughs> Eventually, the acid trip uh, wears off, and oh yeah, uh, Aristotle uh, on on uh, his uh, treatise on government. One of the things he said about uh, <clears throat> one of the signs of oligarchy because there's three positive forms of government. There's the virtual uh, virtuous monarchy. There's the virtuous uh, aristocracy, and there's the virtuous republic. And then there's the three negative forms of government. There's the tyranny. There's the oligarchy and there's a democracy. Democracy is shit rule. It's mob rule. It's, you know, hey, we like your bike. We're going to kick your ass and take your bike. Power to the people. Uh, so the, um, one of the signs of, uh, uh, um, of an oligarchy is political, high political people will move from uh, being in a uh, private sector business type uh, and then back again. So Dick Cheney, Dick Cheney was um, uh, Secretary of Defense, and then Halliburton si hired him. Halliburton hired him because they bought out Kellogg Brown and Root, uh, and and cleared that company of four or five billion dollars in debt over uh, asbestos, and they want to get government contracts, right? And Dick Cheney's uh, great uh, commitment to Halliburton was one. Uh, his, his contribution, let me rephrase it. One, when uh, Rosneft uh, bought uh, brand or paid for, let me rephrase that, paid for brand new fracking trucks uh, from Halliburton. He sent them junk from uh, North Africa, was beaten up. And the guy that was in charge here, I talked to him because I, I was a director in Halliburton. Uh, and he told me that, you know, Cheney said, they're fucking communists and, and they'll get whatever the hell I send them. Needless to say, Halliburton uh, did a, uh, a, a slam dunk nut uh, uh, slam in the, in the nuts for itself. You know, own goal. Somehow it got its foot up into, right into its own balls. Uh, and never got another order from uh, Rosneft and, and a lot of other Russian companies. Um, oh, and he also, uh, Dick Cheney was also nice enough uh, to take away uh, the Easter uh, paid holiday from uh, employees of Halliburton. Um, by their deeds you shall know them. Something like that. Um, so, speaking of paid holidays, I want to remind everybody that this channel is not eligible for monetization just because it is too funny. I want to thank everybody here who is a patron and thank everybody who's bought me a coffee. Look, it actually works. You buy me coffees and I drink coffee. Um, also, Stas, yeah, thanks for the patience when, uh, while I do that. Buy me a coffee. Uh, uh, buy me a coffee canceled me. Oh, I, for I, real? I only had a couple of coffees, but uh, yeah, 
Okay. So they don't like where I sit and what I say. So. Oh, oh well. did did you did you uh, link it to some Russian account or was it linked to your like American uh, personality ID account? <laughs> well, it's linked to my uh, Mr. Slavic Man uh, uh, YouTube. Oh, um, I mean the account is the account is an American uh, bank account. Uh, I still oh. have one old bank account that I never closed. Uh, but yeah, they apparently uh, deep sixed it. I had a couple, oh. and they said, well, we have to check before you can take the money out. Okay, and then the check was basically, we're going to steal it and close you. <laughs> I, 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 tried, I tried sending some money to myself from uh, Buy Me a Coffee, and uh, it never got here, and, like, the payment on the other end is, like, completed, and the uh, Buy Me a Coffee <laughs> side, like, 200, 200. So, like, I, I just haven't bothered to, like, uh, you know battle through my bank and and uh, and that uh, institution like the uh, intermediary institutions uh, paperwork and uh, support but i will get around to it eventually plus i'll find another way to withdraw that money uh, electronically probably but yeah in any case everybody who does support me thank you for the support uh yeah, the shares the likes and the comments mean more than the money does the money is like pro forma i guess um so, well, now I'm drinking pee. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, sick. You're not doing a uh, 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 Biden uh, Jr. impression. Yeah, yeah, uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah. By the way, one of the best games ever made. What is that? The Witcher. Yeah, Witcher Three. <laughs> I actually haven't played the the Witcher series. But I do have a couple of friends who are uh, rather into it. I wanted to bring this up because I found the video. Um, this is uh, the airport in Donetsk, that's Texas, and myself uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, as it pans out, this is the tower, I believe, that you were talking about. Um, on this side, we've got, this is the, the control tower of the old airport. Yep, yep. And this is uh, here, the monastery, and over there is the quote-unquote new airport, um, which is also destroyed where there was those uh, two, three battles that happened. Um, you know, uh, a, a friend of mine's uh, a friend, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and these, just, just to qual quantify this, this is all uh, Kazakhs. Um, so... This uh, uh, Ataman, uh, he took uh, his family uh, and he built a small village, I guess you could call it, uh, for, his, for him, his sons and their families, uh, right outside of the Donetsk airport, uh, not too far from it, on a little hillside. This was before all the, everything started. Mm -hmm. So when the war started... Uh, You're saying like 10 years ago? Like not no, two years ago. I'm, right, right. It, well, this happens in 2014, but he built it before mm -hmm. that. A little settlement. I won't call it a village or something like that. A little settlement. Um, so they took up uh, the side of, of the righteous. Uh, and no, that's not the people in Kiev. Um, well, there was, a, there was an article, that I, well, an interview that I watched uh, from Western News. These uh, Swedish Nazis... Well, flat out, out and out Nazis. Uh, they were going to go fight uh, to defend uh, Ukraine. And as they said, uh, first we're going to go join the Azov to, uh, battalion to defend Ukraine from the uh, Asian Russians. Uh, okay. <laughs> Idiots. And then we're going to go fly uh, to Palestine uh, to fight the Jews. Okay, so you genetic uh, dead-enders are going to go fly to Ukraine, join Azov, which is funded by Kolomovsky, who is a citizen of Israel, um, and then you're going to go fight Comedy the Jews. Comedy show. Nothing to do with reality. Comedy show. Well, Nothing to do with reality. <laughs> this guy decided, uh, you know, he, he took his portion uh, of effort to uh, clean up the Swedish gene pool. So as this Antonov is flying in, getting ready to land at the Donetsk airport and bring in uh, reinforcements for Azov and the Nazis, he pops a uh, mortar round right into it. Pretty hard to miss. 
and a Swedish gene pool got better. Um, a lot of people are uh, winning themselves Darwin Awards in this uh, in this uh, theater. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Oh, of yeah. war. I made this meme so that I could get people on Instagram to come to YouTube. So if you found this on Instagram and you're now on YouTube, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um also yes check out um the working brother on instagram i wanted to play this video get your reaction on this we talked about drone warfare this is today's video um fresh out the oven look at this guy catch a drone with his bare hands watch him watch him here's the drone here's the drone it's coming at him it's try and he's injured he's limping and he's he's asking for mercy the drone's still chasing him and the drone goes low and it goes right into his head and he catches it and he walks away um i think we have a winner here i think this guy this guy beat the game you know he, he did a pretty good job because the uh, the detonator is on the tip of the uh of the mine the, uh, right, right. He got it. He yeah. got it from underneath, right? right? But the one that wins it was a a Russian guy that headbutted a drone. It blew up, and then he walked. Oh away. yeah, yeah. We saw that. We saw that, and uh, we, we've we've covered. He also got some injuries, but one would expect injuries from an RPG round. But that goes more to the helmet. You got to say that goes more to the helmet. Like the guy's got uh, no. nads of steel. There, nads of steel. He's gonna stop that. That, I mean, that's God's will right there. Believe good God that or not. Too. But, you know, that too. To that too. That too. That that you know, that, that's, a, that's a friggin' mortar round, right? That ain't, that helmet ain't going to stop it. <laughs> so the fact that he this, had butted a mortar round uh, and walked this, away. There's definitely uh, God's work in there. Um, being the military man you are, I wanted to get your uh, take on these uh, ocean exercises. And the debut of this new uh, Muscovit uh, missile, and these uh, very uh, interesting Chinese-Russian exercises that are happening in uh, that big blue area between China and the U.S. <laughs> oh, the uh, the big uh, lagoon. <laughs> yeah, you know where Godzilla is from. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm waiting for Godzilla to get the hell off. What the fuck, man? It, it, you know, I know. Back the water is they dumped in there? There's going to be like a whole herd of Godzilla. There's going to be Japanese like a herd, of, a herd of a herd of Godzillas coming out soon, huh? That's going to be the next one. Yeah, the herd of Godzillas, the Godzilla family. Junior, go eat, uh, go eat the small city over there. We'll, we'll take the big one. Um, you know, the the Japanese are just massively dumping uh, radioactive water in, in into the ocean. And they've been doing it for, what now, for 14 years? So, yeah, I, I know. It's it's all green policy. Godzilla was green, wasn't he? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think the, the <laughs> idea of Godzilla was green propaganda. Um, speaking of green, look at that beautiful trail. The, the <laughs> Where are all the green people? Uh, complaining about the explosions and the whatnot in 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 Russia and Ukraine with all the pollution. Das, are we losing you? Did we lose you? Are we gonna have to pause this? Oh no, let's pause this. All right, and we're back. This is unpaused. We had some. Uh, how did you call it, Stas? Uh, high speed, low drag internet issues. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the army term was uh, be high speed, low drag. I think I had the uh, low speed, high drag, uh, <laughs> high speed internet, uh, cable internet. It, it, the problem is my neighborhood has a uh, monopolist, so he kind of updates his equipment once in a while. <laughs> Got, Got it. While. Got it. Um, we were uh, discussing passively these uh, exercises and. Uh, the green agenda and how nobody's complaining about uh, all the pollution being done in Ukraine <laughs> by either side, not to mention the DU. <laughs> well, you know, okay, let, let, let's look at reality. Ships 
uh, particularly ships like uh, aircraft carriers, they make great reefs. They make great reefs from a kick <laughs> and jaw traveling at about 20,000 kilometers per hour. So for those of you that are mathematically challenged, that's about 300 kilometers or about 180 miles per minute. Your eye was doesn't it? catch that ship going by. It's like, boop, and it's gone. Was it? And it's gone past your neighborhood and past your city and so on. Um, that's a Russian submarine launching one of those at about uh, 150 kilometers out. There ain't no way you're going to find it. And that thing will, yeah, it's going to accelerate. So it's not going to be quite one minute. But yeah, I got about two and a half, three minutes. <laughs> and, and welcome, Mr. Uh, uh, Admiral or, or ship's captain, though, whoever happens to be, whatever rank they happen to be on that uh, on that aircraft carrier. There was a um, there was a congressional committee hearing back in like eight, 1988 that I watched. Uh, um, it used to be on YouTube, but I guess it got taken down. Uh, so. The committee is asking uh, this four-star admiral, um, if there's a war with the Soviet Union, how long will the U.S. Navy last? Drum roll. <laughs> One week. Two weeks if we don't leave port. <laughs> <laughs> if they come to us. So... <laughs> so. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, no, I heard. No. I heard a joke recently that uh, that uh, there there was a joke in the Soviet Union that they would call um, the Stalin Canal uh, what would be left between Mexico and Canada after uh, they they did some mining with the th thermonuclear no not thermonuclear what do they call hydrogen bombs yeah if they left a hydrogen yeah. a couple of hydrogen bombs on the on the coast so yeah you learn something new every day while making comedy on YouTube um that, that was back when Canada was a nice place uh, Canada is like the epitome of evil now under under uh tyrant uh, good hair so you know, uh, they, they, Justin uh, Castro yeah uh who, um who, yeah i was gonna say if you look at his father he definitely ain't his father's kid um <laughs> We 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 can we can use Canada as a perfect segue to one of the topics that I wanted to cover today. Um we've got news of uh let me read this out. Six employees of the British Embassy in Moscow were convicted of conducting intelligence and subversive work in the Russian Federation, the FSB. London coordinated the escalation of military political situation in the world, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Six people, um, people, and here we've got uh, Rebar's uh, report on it. Uh, can I scroll this? Yes, I can. So people can pause and read. Uh, what have you got to say about uh, British spies? Oh, so let me get this straight. Uh, Anglos in your home doing stupid shit that uh, to, to screw things up. Oh, that, you know, there's there's a, uh, a Russian saying, if there's suddenly uh, strife in your family, it means an Englishman uh, came to breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. First time I heard that uh, it was, uh, it was I, I I I found the how can I say the humor appropriate and the, and the, yeah. and the parallel and the parallel is quite obvious. Yeah, it, it suffers a little in the translation, but there's also another Russian saying that just that just covers everything. Angličanka uh, gadget, gadget does bad shit. <laughs> just just on purpose uh it, it's kind of hard how would you translate guide it Speaking yeah some russian like and things that don't translate uh working brother is now on rootube did you know rootube can copy all of your uh videos within days look all of my videos are now on rootube it's unbelievable um Top tips to YouTube, and uh, yeah, if you're there, go subscribe. I have one subscriber on YouTube um, without even trying. <laughs> it's the small things, man. It's only my third day on YouTube, and I've like I've already got one subscriber. It's probably the Russian Ministry of something or another. <laughs> but, hey, one we subscriber is one subscriber. <laughs> and and the reason you can take a stick at. 
the the reason that I that I uh, started becoming more active there, other than the fact that YouTube is YouTube, um, is because I heard uh, Rumble is also banned from Rumble side in in Russia. Like you can't access Rumble from Russia. Yeah, you, you, without VPN, you can't. I don't, and I really don't understand why. It was uh, some uh, racism mid level. As as a Russian, you're new to it. As a Serb, I'm telling you, it's racism. Like we it used to happen with visas with us, <laughs> like long time ago, long long time ago, before <laughs> before before it was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, by the way, if you ever want something really interesting to uh, look up, uh, then there's a whole series of YouTube uh, videos on this. Uh, take a look at uh, YouTube uh, on history on uh, well, on YouTube a history on how Slavs became white. Um. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. <laughs> Under American law, this is no shit. Under American law, white people originally, uh, and, and this was an immigration policy for America too back in the eighteen hundreds. Uh, white people were only considered those people from uh, the Germanic countries, because there wasn't a Germany there yet, France, uh, UK, uh, Scandinavia. I think that was it. And then every other group, like Italians, Greeks, Armenians, they literally had to prove that they were white to get the stamp, legal stamp, and be declared white people. Well, all I can say is like that meme that Serbians are very proud of that I don't have handy, unfortunately, where in Belgrade in 1956, there's a graduate from an African country taking his diploma in a university in Belgrade for free. And uh, on the other hand, in Brussels, there's uh, African children in a zoo. Um in 1956 so like when when you tell me that like you know white people had to get a certificate to be white in in the u.s i'm just like okay why is that surprising <laughs> you know and, and when you mean uh there's a black person in a zoo no she's not looking at the animals she is one of the animals <laughs> yeah yeah and, and they're, and they're the, being uh, they're being kept in the cages yeah 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 in, in, in the brussels in 56 by the way in their photos <laughs> Yeah, no comment. There's other photos with uh, little children playing on on the backs of African. Yeah, there's all kinds of photos in history. <laughs> Some people just like don't get it. It's just like those uh, Nazis who went into Kursk. Oh, speaking of Nazis who went into Kursk, that's another thing that I wanted to bring up. What I'm getting good at these segues. Huh? No, well, no fertilizer that's that's already matured. This is uh, liberation. I'm getting into this film. It was shared on some channel. I also shared it on my channel. Um, liberation one, uh, film one is the Kursk scene. Hold on, let's mute this. Um, is the Kursk scene? Let's go full screen. And you can talk over uh, 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 what this meant back then. What this movie means in Soviet movie cinema history, I mean this collection of movies, because it's like five, seven, ten movies, I don't know even, I'm on movie three, and uh, and and how <laughs> those uh, fans of nuts are repeating history, because like it's literally the same uh, fields, you know? <laughs> you know, I'll say this, I, I'm still amazed at, at how they made movies back then. And not just Russian <laughs> movies, but you know, you got Cleopatra to look at it. I mean, the amount of people involved, this battle scene is just mm -hmm. freaking huge. And they've got mm -hmm. fly through with uh, with uh, uh, ground of, uh, attack aircraft, and they're got, I mean, just coordinating all the shit. And this is CGI, right? I mean, they've got yeah. thousands upon thousands of extras running around, getting blown up, shooting each other. It's just like when it's, it's, you know Ben Hur or uh, you're exactly, at exactly. And they had thousands of extras and they made great movies. As a oh, your internet's conking out. Thousands of people. Your internet's yeah, conking it's, it's, out it's again. It's an amazing uh, battle scene. I mean, really, considering especially considering technology. Your your internet conked out uh, for a little bit there. You right after you were saying uh, comparing it to Ben -Hur, Ben Hur basically and saying that uh, none of it is CGI. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing scene and and I wanted I wanted to get your take on the 
you know, being a tank platoon commander, if I recall correctly, um, at some point, you you uh, obviously can maybe make some kind of comparison or contra- uh, contrast this kind of tank assault, which is what we've come to see in movies and expect, with what's going on now in, in Kursk and the huge numbers of losses that the Ukrainians are suffering. Um, well, I say Ukrainians, but they're all like, you know... <laughs> Marx Reisner, <Yeah>. non-NATO troops. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you could still have battles like this, uh, but it, it's, it's much harder because uh, well, if, if World War Three kicks off, you'll still be able to have battles like this. It'll be easier, actually. <laughs> uh, the problem right now is, dude, between satellites, spy planes, drones, and all the other shit... You can't mm. get that many troops. You can't get a, a battalion size without everybody noticing that, hey, they're over there. Um, let's bomb yeah. them before they move. Uh, and, and that becomes a big problem, obviously. But, yeah, if uh, if World War Three ever kicks off, even non-nuclear, all those satellites are going to be gone. Your GPS and your uh, streaming services are, are going to be gone. Uh, it's, you know, life's a bitch. That's <laughs> just gonna, what's going to happen. That, that's um, actually and, and that's you know, actually kind of like a current topic with the with the Putin's new verbal clarification of like don't fuck with us or we'll nuke your satellites in space. Basically, I think is what he said um, in, tra- in translated yeah, street speak. I, I think uh, <laughs> I'll translate it in in, uh, in in American speak. Musk is going to lose a lot of money. <laughs> Life's yeah. a bitch. <laughs> Musk, what a joke! You want to get into uh, elections? And in the U.S., look, I made this meme while while it was live. These are actual YouTube uh, subtitles. She's a Marxist. Everyone knows she's a Marxist. Um, I made this live while while the debate was going. Uh, what do you think of the debate? Uh, three against one. Yeah. Well, what do you expect from what was it? CBS that was hosting. Um, I think it's ABC, by the way, but same I, garbage, yeah. Oh, yeah, same garbage. By the way, I've got a couple of videos of, uh, 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 what was it, uh, what's the name of the town? Uh, the, the Springfield, yeah, it's, uh, the Simpsons town. Springfield, Ohio. i got a couple of uh, very interesting yeah, videos. One where there's a Haitian woman uh, just chomping down on a cat right before she gets arrested. Yeah, she just butchered the cat right in the middle of the street to start eating it. Uh, another one, a uh, Haitian guy walking with some duck uh, from the pond, uh, from the uh, the local pond. You know, minus its you know its head's kind of uh, got a, a, a slight different degree uh, of separation. Um, yeah, shit like that. That's you know why not? You know, poultry, cats, dogs. It's Haiti, man. They eat each other when they get a chance. <laughs> so, um, you you yeah, you say I'd be less worried you... about your dog disappearing, more worried about your kids being on somebody's menu. Yeah, uh, you said eat the cat, so I have to play the song. I have a cued. Eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. Eat the cat, eat eat the cat. Eat the they're cat. eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. Eat the. They're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. Eat the cat, eat eat the cat. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. <laughs> uh, the rest of this video is probably not suitable for YouTube. Uh, um, it's it's already is a it's a compilation I came across now on Telegram of stuff that's already on 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 Twitter on what's it called TikTok. Talk, yeah um no comment i i don't know what to say i don't know what to say do you have anything to say oh, to re- us the, about the eating the cat more interesting. she's literally just sitting there and the cops arrive uh, somebody uh locals arrive they're videotaping this and they got a flashlight on her they call the cops and she's just <laughs> eating the cat but, uh, um, and, and not eating the cat in the other context but in the <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> in the, the, this is sense. This has been this has been uh, translated to the other context. Um, yeah, I got some Russian propaganda here. Um, warning: if your discretion is. And this is pure Russian propaganda. <laughs> um, 
сегодня готовы, наконец, переходить к следующему этапу. К праздникам подготовили объекту новую прошивку. Загружайте русификатор. Русификатор. Unflappy disks. Um, I I don't want to get how the copyright strike. How much cocaine would they have to? How many? How much meth and cocaine would they have to pump in to to get them to move that much? Um, I I I think it's nanobots, which is not even funny you know, these days. The, the blinking Sullivan administration does not approve of this message. Um, the blinking Sullivan uh, administration uh, has been going around. I just saw news that they that they said something along the lines of uh, the reason that that the more countries are not supporting one of the main reasons that. Uh, more countries around the world are not supporting Ukraine is because of RT and Russia. <laughs> it's just like, thank God. <laughs> you know, literally, thank God. Like, there's nothing else you can say. Um, also, yeah. considering you were in Bosnia, I got some Bosnia news for you. Where's that? Where's oh, that Lord. picture? Do I have the? Do I have the picture? Do I have the? Yes, Swiss Muslim. Um, I've got the picture of the news. Did oh, you hear yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. hear this about this? The Sanya? Albanian girl. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's actually apparently Kosovar Albanian, not just Albanian. We've got a, a video here from Arno Guyon. Let's see what we got here. There's a joke at this, at the end of this, trust me. So, that's the news, and this is my chat's response. Because, <laughs> you know, there's Serbs in my chat, so <laughs> it's, it's yeah. not our first time. <laughs> so, so, let me get this straight. Let me, let me get straight. A liberal woman is attacking and shooting mothers and children. <laughs> which part don't you get? Yeah. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, you know, uh, Harris's biggest point is she will make sure you have a chance to murder your baby. Because yeah, that's that, how uh, During forward. the debate, yeah. During the debate, yeah. S screw everything else. If we can't nuke you, God damn it, we'll at least get you to butcher your kids. And, and if you want to put your later on in life, you know, I mean, why not? I mean, you can still do it. They're not adults yet. <laughs> they piss you off. You don't have enough money for school. Just go, go slit their throats and shoot them a few times. Uh, no comment. Uh, we got a Haitian gar a Garfield. Um, that goes along with the, the other thing that you were talking about. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, uh, where's that uh, UK jailing thing? Jailing rapists, those other people, and murderers. No, <laughs> but jailing working class people for Facebook posts. Why not? <laughs> Anything to comment on the UK? Do you understand what kind of bad situation they're in? When they started this crusade for public safety, 
it turns out they only had a hundred places left in their prison system. I mean, they, these people are willing to go no so way. far and sacrifice so much to put away these hardened criminals. I mean, the, the guys on Facebook uh, by letting out, you know, mass murderers and rapists. They're willing to sacrifice your daughter to make sure justice is served. Power to the people. Um, I'm all over the place here, but this is another meme um, that I made that I made during the during the debate. Um, they sent her to negotiate peace three days before the war. Um, <laughs> did you know she was there to negotiate peace? That's news to me, man. So was she negotiating peace between the Haitians and the uh, and the Jamaicans back on the border? <laughs> no, no, the uh, Ukrainians the and the Russians. Well, exactly no, no, peace? The, the Ukrainians and the Russians. But that was a good one. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know she was there. I, I I really had no idea she had anything to do with it. Believe me, no one else knew she was there either. She was hanging um, out with Blinken playing the guitar somewhere in a bar. Yeah, that's also uh, not, wouldn't be surprising. Wouldn't be out of character. Let's put it that way. Uh, shout out to Tim Kirby, Russia Hardcore, who actually uh, hooked us up um, or connected us, one could say. Ruskie, как же достали это глупые стереотипы? Uh, uh, Russians, we have had enough of those darn stereotypes. Also Russians. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, don't screw with those stereotypes. <laughs> um, hey, there's a reason stereotypes exist. It's because they're true. Uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, my, my bear is waiting for me to take him for a ride, you know. I'm going to... Uh, Grab a bottle of uh, vodka, put on my lapki, and and go shoot the AK in the middle of the night while I'm riding my bear. <laughs> I'm already dressed for my genociding, so don't worry about it. Who <laughs> <laughs> yeah. genocide this week? I mean, I don't know. But uh, yeah, you guys, you guys are late to the game. Um, genociding hey, was know. cool <laughs> long before you guys got started on that. Listen, we, we couldn't make it because the Ukrainians were uh, murdering a division uh, for breakfast. And, and, and another one for lunch. We just couldn't get enough people together. Every Got day it. By, by 12 o'clock. Got it. Makes sense. Um, is the goat to you. Is there a anything tanker, else? We'll the tank. Is there anything else you'd uh, like to mention before we call this a talk? Oh, Lord have mercy. Um... Hmm, Camilla on her knees doing her work. No, I'm sorry. Uh, that was her previous job. Uh, <laughs> was that too uh, rough? No, uh, nothing. It's a comedy show. You can say anything you want. But <laughs> yeah, 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 I did watch. Uh, I did watch the U.S. debate. I, I could feel my IQ dropping steadily. Um, you know, I, I, toward the end, I got to the point where I was uh, nodding along with what they were saying, and and a little bit of uh, spittle was coming out of the side of my mouth. Um, I think they had to put me in shock therapy to get me get get the brain waves back. Oh, uh, geez. Um, yeah, but with Camilla, apparently, well, at least that's one of the theories. Her earrings uh, look a hell of a lot like the uh, earrings with microphones in them. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure there's somebody in there. There's an assistant constantly going, "Don't hackle, don't hackle, don't hackle, don't hackle, don't hackle." God damn it, don't hackle! I know you want to hackle, don't hackle. Because she didn't hackle. No what? You're right. You're right. Now that you mention it, now that you mention it, there was no like <laughs> from her. Yeah. You're right. It was. Like, it was probably yeah. like in one ear they were telling her what to do, and the other ear was just a loop of "Don't cackle, don't cackle, don't cackle." <laughs> well, that, that was that's her signature. That's like you know that I mean that that is her signature. The whole world um, knows her for one thing. That is well, that except is for very, California government officials, they know her for something else. Um, 
This is a PG-13 good show. I mean, good, <laughs> good, good service, yes, yes. That's yeah. one way to put it. Um, it's, it's very... Um, deep devo- um, deeply devoted. Deeply devoted. Deeply devoted, yes. She <laughs> she pronunciates well, uh, you know. Uh, yes. She, she, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. I oh. definitely her, uh, her strong point. I've got a random quote here from the internet. Questioning and doubting what's going on these days does not make you anti-anything, nor does it make you a conspiracy theorist. Actually, questioning is and should be the place of reason. The fact that questioning has become taboo should, in fact, send a chill up everyone's spine. Um, yeah. Whose democracy are you defending? Uh, the one in my head man the one in my head (laughs) and on that note I think that's enough for today Um, Stas thank you again everyone who stuck around to the end hope you enjoyed yourself like share subscribe all that good stuff dislike if you dislike leave a comment if you feel like you think I'm gonna listen to you and uh, see you soon (laughs) peace out everyone (laughs) 